In today's episode of the Swing Report, we've got new Mizuno irons, the Mizuno Pro irons. Thomas can hit some shots, we'll tell you everything you need to know about the new Mizuno clubs for 2022. Golfers make sure as well to skip to the final chapter for our all-encompassing final thoughts. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahola, Second Swing Golf. Today joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Thomas, new Mizuno irons. I know both of us are big fans of Mizuno irons. Um, of course, the feel is the big kind of the, the you know eye catcher with them. Uh, but they also look fantastic every year. And now Mizuno Pro, or kind of, it's almost basically a new MP line. They're kind of you know using that branding of Mizuno Pro this year. But three models, they're all kind of different. They all have their own characteristics and they all kind of fit a different player, but um, the feel is great. Uh, some of the same technology that they've used over the past is continuing here, but they've also made some slight changes. Yeah, just initially looking at them, very clean looking irons. Uh, you mentioned feel with Mizuno. I think mm -hmm. we always talk about it. Once you hit a Mizuno, it's hard to go right. away from a Mizuno feel because it always feels incredibly good due to the forging that they do with their irons. Uh, so we have three irons we're going to be talking about today. We've got the 221. That is the blade replacement. So that's yeah. the replacement for the MP20. Got the 223, that's going to be like the cavity back, yep. and then we also have the 225, which is the hollow body mm -hmm. uh, distance players iron, really. Yeah, exactly. So they've kind of they've been doing this with their last couple of iron releases, where they've had sort of that blade, um, which is going to be your really kind of upper echelon players. That player's cavity, which can kind of dip in a little bit more forgiveness, but still kind of that player's workable club, and then that hollow body player's distance, where you get a lot of distance, uh, a lot of forgiveness and stability as well, but the way Mizuno constructs it, it's still the same forging process, so you don't really lose a ton of that feel. So um, we'll kind of get into some of the key tech stuff here. So we'll talk about you know all three of them, what's similar, and it's really that grain flow forging process for all three of them. Each of these is des designed that way. Um, and the eight through pitch, I believe in, is it all of them? Or at least in the 223 and 225, you have the 1025 mild carbon steel forging. 221 and, then, and the 8 through pitching wedge in the 223 and, then, okay. and 225. So all of them in the 221, the blade. Yep. And then from the other the other two, then you bring in that cromoly, that kind of unique material that's kind of, um, that really only Mizuno uses in their forgings um, with some of their more kind of forgiving irons, I'd say. Um, but then after that is where you get into kind of some of the more unique stuff. So we'll start with the blade, the 221. It's, uh, you got that copper underlay, which actually that's also a unique thing for all three of them. Copper underlay underneath there to provide a, another kind of layer for feel. But look at that finish too. You see that satin plus kind of a mirror combo on that one. The other two are kind of that brushed satin finish. Um, you also have the thicker muscle behind the 221. Uh, that's a little bit different, a little bit thicker than maybe past um, blades from Mizuno. Uh, also an optimized graduated tapered blade. So. It provides more penetrating ball flight as loft increases. So you're kind of, it's almost more control, right? That's what you're looking for when you're scoring clubs. You right. get more loft, but you're trying to work the shot a little bit more with your eight, nine pitching wedge, those scoring clubs. So they've kind of optimized that center of gravity in there to allow you to do that. So that's the blade, and that's, you know, someone like you, you're trying to score with that club. So I would imagine you're excited for that part in the testing today. Yeah, it's the the 221, it's for golfers that want everything out of an iron. They want to mm -hmm. be able to control it. They want to be able to work the ball left and right, especially with those scoring clubs. Right, and now in the 223, so this has been kind of my category for irons, where I'm in, I'm not going to play a blade because that's way too intimidating for me. But it's, I still like that player's club with a little bit of workability, and that's what this 223 is. Um, so we mentioned that there is the copper layer, uh, copper underlayer, and there's the grain flow forging, but then there's a little bit of a cavity with what they call a flow micro slot in the back, uh, which adds a little bit more of st some stability, some kind of brings that center gravity a little bit lower than the blade per se. Um, and then also, as we talked about with the forging, it brings in that cromoly um, in the longer clubs. So. You kind of have some distance elements in there, um, but then also that workability that you're looking for. And then the feel, as we'll probably test, is still excellent for a club that, you know, they kind of take a little bit of those elements out from the blade, but it's still excellent. Yeah, I'm holding the 223 seven iron in my hand, and I'm seeing a little bit of that beveled edge there, mm -hmm. what helps with that, that pocket in the back yeah. here, which essentially, as you mentioned, is going to lower the center of gravity for your longer iron clubs, say yeah. four iron through seven iron, 
it's the clubs that are harder to get the ball in the air. So it's right. going to help you by having that extra weight down there to launch the ball a little mm -hmm. bit higher. And then lastly, the 225. So that is kind of your player's distance club, as we've talked about. And it's that hollow body COR construction. So you're getting a bunch of distance out of this club. And then um, with that, you have kind of the multi-thickness core tech face, which is they've used in other clubs that um, with like their, um, you know, JPX hot metal clubs, for example. Um, and then they've also added some tungsten weighting, which is another kind of way that manufacturers increase the forgiveness in their irons, usually in the heel and toe areas, and then also down low. So um, I would imagine a lot more forgiveness and distance out of that one. Well, the one thing I'm noticing with the 225 is comparing the size differences versus the MP20 HMB, it's significantly sleeker looking down on it. Okay. So I'm, I'm impressed with the look. They've actually done a lot of work here to make this club head look a little bit more appealing, a little bit smaller versus the HMB. Yeah, I mean, I think that's always one thing that manufacturers are chasing. And we'll look at that, plus we'll test as well. And one thing to note, the 225 is 30 degrees with the 7-iron, 32 with the 223, and then 34 with the 221. So there is that kind of gradual, you know, uh, trend of loft there. And then we also do have the 4-iron four, uh, four and pitching wedge for each of them as well. So maybe we'll tinker with that and do some testing there. But, Thomas, I know these are kind of your favorite videos to do throughout the year. When you get new irons to test out, we got TrackMan. Uh, we will see what the testing shows us here, but it's it's new Mizuno players irons, so I think we're excited. New beautiful irons. Let's do some shots. All right. So Thomas, we'll start with let's start with pitching wedge and go up the up the board here. Um, you got the two twenty one. Um, what's that look like at a dress? And you know, I mean, comparing it maybe to other kind of blades that you've played. I mean, uh, is there anything that jumps out? It looks really good. Yeah. It looks really clean, not much offset. Right. This is a real player's iron to look down at. That's probably, you can tell it as a club. You're going to be able to shape your shot if you need to. Right. You know, what, from 140, 50 yards, whatever it is. Yeah. This is a pure looking pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. That was a good swing. The draw did peel in there, though. Yeah. There you go. Clean. Bang. Go in. Move left. It doesn't sound that different, though. Right. It doesn't sound like it's like same crazy kind of loud, feel. you know, yeah, like a, yeah. like a player's distance usually does. That was not a very good swing. Might be the other way now. Okay. All right. So, Thomas, we've got all of our data on the screen and you have the feedback now after hitting three pitching wedges so talk to me about the kind of the feel and look first of all because i'm going to tell you sound wise i was surprised that the 225 basically sounded the same as the other two yeah when it comes to feel feel is sound and not gonna lie they all felt very very similar okay with wedge in my hand yeah yeah because yeah. i'm surprised you know usually you get and again, these are wedges, so then maybe that's part of it. But you get the larger club, that like, hollow body one in your hand, you start to notice a big difference in the right. way, you know, obviously look will be a different, but also the feel and sound is usually different. I didn't notice anything. You could have, I would have been my eyes closed and, you know, I wouldn't have been able to tell a difference. I mean, all wedges have that grain flow forged HD yeah, yeah. Uh, in them. So all of them are going to be the same feel with regards to the same kind of construction mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. So... Now, anything else coming pop up? I mean, looking at dispersion map, looking at numbers, is there anything that you know you are taking away from this? So clearly, the 221 it looked a little smaller, looked more like a blade. Right. But what I noticed at address, the 225 and the 223, 
they looked like they were pretty similar in okay. size. Um, now the 225 is just a little bit larger. Okay. Um, and then touching on loft, so I think it's 44 degrees aloft on the 225, but the 223 and the 221 we're both looking at 46 degrees aloft. So you'd expect the distance okay. to be very similar with the 221 and 223, mm -hmm. and then the 225 just going a little, just a little yeah. bit further is what I would expect. So but if I were to you know, look at the, the numbers here and look at the distance, you do see that it will increase with the 225, and then the 223 and 221 are pretty similar. So kind of what you'd expect, right? Yep, yep. And pretty then expect. one thing too, I mean, I don't know if this is like a, a legitimate theory, I guess, but you know, the, the more workable club, 221, you see a little bit more draw and kind of that dispersion over to the left. Again, not a huge sample size here because we'll do a larger sample with the seven irons, but you see just a little bit more curvature over to the left, maybe a little bit more workable club, center of gravity, things like that. More of a pronounced shot, what I'm used to seeing when I'm playing yeah. outside. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to seven irons now, maybe five with each, and okay. then we'll kind of do some discussion on how those feel. It's a little different. That was better. That was more like the normal swing. I mean, it feels incredibly good off the face when you hit it well. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's been the case with Mizuno for decades. Um, right. One thing to note, too, we didn't even say yet, um, is the lie angle piece with Mizuno irons, is that they are, by standard, uh, flatter than a, than most brands. Um, so, like, the lie angle for the 7 iron was, what, 61 and a half? Um, and generally, it's 62 and a half, maybe? 62 and a half to 63 is what you're seeing okay. with other manufacturers. So, yeah. there is that piece, and it's important for, you know, fitting-wise, because that's an important difference to know if you want to just go in and buy a set um, and pre-order a set. You should know the line angle is going to be different than, say, Titleist, Ping, TaylorMade, yep. Callaway. Yep. Yeah, generally a degree to a degree and a half flatter than other mm -hmm. manufacturers. Like I said, when you hit it well, it feels mm -hmm. really good. That looks like a good ball. But I do notice that I get punished just a little bit when I don't quite catch it in the middle of the face. Yeah. I think the first shot we hit there, we saw a 1-3-3 three, three smash factor. And that's pretty low for me for, mm -hmm. for a 7 iron. Then we saw an average that was one three eight. So I had a couple of misses in there yeah. that I didn't quite get as rewarded as I would with a more forgiving iron. Sure. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's standard for a blade. Uh, but, yeah, I think like this one right here, what would you, was it 1-3-3 three, three on that one? Right. But then over here, you get one over at 142. But basically, I, I mean, look at these three right here, though. Those are <laughs> that little draw right next to the pin. So yep. um, nice to know that you can hit that draw and trust it for sure with this blade. Uh, I would imagine that would be the case even, too, for the 223 here as well. Yeah, 221 feels incredibly good. Looks really good. Just like the wedge, I'm not seeing really much offset yeah. at all. I mean, it's still fairly shiny looking down at. Um, the, the, the face is at least got the, the satin look to it. Yeah, yeah. But on the toe, on the heel, on the bottom, it's still a very, very kind of shiny that blade. type thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Well, let's try out the 223 here now, see how things change. Okay. That's a lot more ball speed there. It is. Which is expected with lower loft, but I feel like it's right. a pretty big jump. It is a bigger jump than I would expect. I mean, okay. Talking about a two degree difference aloft, so mm -hmm. I would expect six yards without any technology differences. Okay. There's a little bit more behind this for sure. There's, I can yeah. feel it off the face. Okay, interesting. Felt good. Interesting. So at impact, you can feel a difference compared to the 221, that it's just a little bit, is it more of a thud or like what do you feel at impact that's different? 
It, I mean, the thud theory, yes, but it, it just feels like there's just more juice behind it. Okay. It just feels like at impact, there's more power coming off the club face. Where with the 221, it just felt like it was just, yeah. just pure feel, mm -hmm. no extra technology there to help. Yeah, because you jumped up, you know, five miles an hour, well, almost five miles an hour in ball speed, and you jumped up almost 10 yards of carry distance. Um, no, I did have one miss it in there with the 221, so that will bring that number yeah, down yeah, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if we, I guess we can, just for the sake of doing that, we'll do that quick. We'll take this out. Then we, that way now you've got four versus four. So, now we got kind of, you know, f yeah, we got good shots here. Um, I guess you only hit four. I didn't even realize that. Um, but, so you've got, you know, still almost, a, I mean, it's a nine-yard difference in carry. Yeah, eight yards, is, 178 to 186, and, and yeah, so I usually a little say, bit farther than you would expect, maybe, even though it's a two-degree difference in It's loft. at the top end. I usually say three to four yards, so it's, okay. it's at the very, very top end. Okay. Uh, club speed was the same, so that wasn't the, the cause there. Um, we just noticed, yes, there's just significantly more ball speed to bring my efficiency rate up. Okay, yeah. interesting. I, and, you know, I think there's something to, you know, Mizuno using that Cromley, um kind of material and it's they use that in the hot in the hot metal stuff and it's that distance oriented material it's strong it's mm -hmm. it's really explosive and so using that for the the 223 here and the, I think it's the longer club seven iron and up really some extra pop to it I think so maybe that's kind of what you're feeling there it felt so good yeah it, yeah I'm not gonna lie these are these feel really impressive off the face just okay. just a little bit more explosiveness behind it but wow it it felt good Okay. Yeah. So let's go to the, to the 225 now. We'll do the player's distance iron here. And there's some more explosiveness. Yep. There you yep. go. I kind of figured we'd see a shot over 200 yards today with a 7 iron. Uh, it's, I, it felt really good off the face. Hmm. The face so open. I'm interested to see what the final ball speed averages are with the 225 because I'm seeing a couple that are pretty similar to the 223 so far. Yeah. Very consistent around 128 each time. Mm hmm. What is wrong with that one? That was a little low on the face. I don't know. It was interesting. The, the, the numbers were pretty good on that. I it felt off, but I mean, really, it was a little bit lower. But I'll, I have to do some investigation here. All right. Let's do some investigation. Forgiveness, I guess. Look at that. That is where you hit that one. <laughs> I told you it was a little low on the face. I mean, centimeters, not even a <laughs> centimeter low on the face. But uh, look, I mean, it, it didn't, the spin didn't change much. Right, so. that, was, that was interesting. It was a little lower. Um, ball speed retained the ball speed. It was yeah, 128. it did. I mentioned before that everyone's been 128 so yeah. far. All well, right, I good. guess it wasn't an outlier then. It was, <laughs> I was, that's a consistent performer. Yeah. All right, so that is five in a row with the ball speed in the 128 area. Yeah. So, so That's what, pretty impressive. And one thing I wanted to note too that is interesting about that last shot is generally when you go away, now again, this is still a forged and they're grain flow forging process, but it's not the, the, the soft carbon steel, or the mild carbon steel, I guess. And usually when you go away from that is when you get kind of the, the feedback of the feel gets a little bit muddy where you can't really feel some of those things. But you felt a very noticeable difference going a little bit low on the face there, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so bringing this up again, I'll see what the numbers say. Obviously a little increase in distance again, the loft two degrees um, uh, lower in loft, so that was expected. Um, and we see that spin drop considerably, but the consistency factor is kind of the big, the big hitter here. So noticing, I mean, look at that, the ball speed co consistency. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna expand this to see the shots, but you got 128.5.7.9.9, then barely over 129. That's pretty good. It's pretty good, considering there's also the one which was, I think this one, which is the one you thought kind of you missed, but look at the smash. Well, you oh, see, yeah. 142, 42, 42, 42, 41. Oh, see, it was a miss hit. 
It was a miss hit, yeah. <laughs> By your standards, it was. But um, give me more thoughts on this club. Um, again, feel and sound like the sound. I didn't notice a difference in sound compared to the other, the 221 and 223. Yeah, so I mean, it had to have been pretty similar. They're muted. They definitely are muted. Mm -hmm. The forged feel, it's so good. Yeah. I, yeah. Mizuno kills it with they their, do. With their mean, feel with their That iron. grain flow forging process is, it's, it's the, the way that they do it and the, the feel it provides is unbeatable, really. I mean, I haven't, there's, that's the one thing that you hear every single time when someone plays Mizuno irons, they hit Mizuno irons. I'm sure in fittings when people are hitting Mizuno irons for the first time, they're like, oh man, that feels awesome because there's just something about it that's just different and it, it works. So, um, going from the 223 to the 225, I didn't really notice much of a difference in offset and look either. Okay. So I'll grab the three irons here just to look at those that address. Actually, and if I look here, I'm I got pull the, right up the one. numbers here. I got the numbers here. Offset wise, seven iron, um, 0 0.122. And yeah, so the offset's the same 223 and 225. They really don't look. It's the same offset. Too different at all, actually. Interesting, because they yep. used to have, at least in, it seemed like in the last series with the MP20, they had the HMB and the uh, kind of the MC were very different in size, I thought, in my opinion, anyway. I'm, I'm, these I'm ones struggling look a to lot see similar. it. If anything, what I'm seeing with the 225 is from heel to toe, it may be just a little longer, but I actually feel like the 220. Um, the 223 is a little bit taller on the on the face. Okay. Oh, the only I see. thing that I'm seeing here. Deeper face. Yeah, I mean, I, it's interesting because they pick apart. Because yeah, I feel like the last series, the, the the HMB model or like their player resistance was so much thicker and bigger than right. the the MC version. You know, but I it have seems those like right this here. time they've they've changed it a little bit. I actually have them right here. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so. Mizuno 225 versus the H HMB. Take a look at the two of them here. Yeah, it's a uh, very big difference. It's, it's, it's definitely sleeked down a lot, actually. Yeah, it doesn't seem as tall as the HMB mm -hmm. looked in the past. Mm -hmm. The top line, they're always trying to work on doing that top line just oh, a little yeah. bit sleeker. Looks, yeah, it looks you know, significantly smaller. And then if I look at the uh, the 223 and the MP20 MMC, pretty similar. Similar? Yeah. Okay. Pretty it similar. just seems like they've really yeah. slimmed down that that HMB or player resistance version yeah. of the the new set, which it's smaller from heel to toe with the 223 versus the MMC. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. But. And these these subtle differences. It's funny we talk about them so much, but. They do make a difference, and especially to a player like you who really kind of hones in on the look of an iron, that stuff does matter to a player, you know, in their mind as well. So, yeah. what were you saying? Offset? You said offset with the it's 221 the same. is it's not much, and the then the other two are the, is the, the same, same, right? The 225 and the 223 have the same offset. Okay. At least in the seven iron. So, um, yeah, that's. It, it really feels like they're kind of trying to make those, I guess, closer together in terms of performance. Um, you know characteristics and the way they look as well. So what about like that. bounce? Like I would guess bounce. Let's see here. Bounce, you got three. Three degrees of bounce. Three on degrees the, on, the, on the seven iron and then the 223, um, you've got so three. So three degrees of bounce. Okay. So not wow. much bounce on, on there. And uh, the reason I was bringing that up is the loft. We, uh, we know that the 225's sure. got two degrees less loft on it mm -hmm. than the 223. Yeah. And that's the only thing visually you can really see it address. And the only thing you can see is a little less spin. Right. A little bit more yeah. ball speed with the 225. Right. Well, um, we've got, well, let's just hit a few four irons now, kind of do the final piece of our testing here, and then we'll draw some, some final conclusion here. Okay. Oh, that was ripped. Yeah, I hit that good. That sounded like you just smashed it. Yeah, I forced myself to hit that one good. But yeah, it looks fairly small looking down at. I personally wouldn't play a four iron blade. Right. And yeah, I don't. I, You've gone into more of that player's cavity category at the top of your set. Yep. Um, in the past, but. But it, I mean, if you're a golf purist out there, which that I know golf so purists yeah. love them some Mizuno blade irons. Yeah. Another one. 
or we come across a lot of people that are kind of the collectors out there that you know want to kind of just I don't want to say hoard that might be the uh, too aggressive of a term but you know they collect a lot of golf clubs and they try to find the the best looking ones over time and a lot of Mizuno blades are in those collections and this is probably one that's going to be added to that cause right very clean clean look yeah clean shiny look to it I might have pulled that just a little bit not oh, bad. That's pretty good. I mean, uh, maybe I should be playing a blade for him. <laughs> <laughs> Those were, uh, I just I think that was yeah, within a yard that. for carry distance. Yeah, put the blade in your bag, Thomas. Look at that. <laughs> Even you said you thought you pulled that one. Yeah. But no, that's yeah. pretty good. Feels really good. I just would be worried when I don't hit the middle of the face. Right, right. What it would do. Which is why we can kind of get now to the 223 and you can hit a few of those, but that's why you kind of tra make that transition in your set. Yeah. That had a little more juice on it again. Yeah, it did. A lot more juice on it. That has some ball speed. 228 carry. That was a little miss hit there. Yeah. <laughs> a little tully on that one. So that's kind of that almost gear effect knuckleballer. Yeah. But a little less spin on it. I wonder, that, I mean, that dispersion circle, it has to be pretty close, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got away with one. Yep, got away with that Some one. forgiveness in there. Just a touch left. Just a uh, touch. Yep. Very literally. That dispersion circle is probably pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, that's that'll that'll work for you, I'm sure. All right, that was pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> so, in the terms of the four iron. You know, we'll get the 225 here in a second, but anything major difference there? I know you noticed, you noticed the pop, kind of extra pop in, in feel with the 7 iron compared to the blade. You I still feel, feel that it. that same thing? Yeah. Still feel it. It's, it's definitely there. Okay. Yeah. All right. The 225 now, this is kind of be, this will probably be, you'll hit your farthest shots of the day here. So we might see a 250 yard total here. Let's find out. It definitely feels like it. So interesting. This one doesn't want to turn over for me. That plus, I feel like the ball speed is pretty similar to the 223 again. You're getting that same type of thing. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm actually not hitting this one as well. You can see my club speed is a little faster. Right. But my ball speed really isn't any faster. So the efficiency number is mm -hmm. not really any higher. And that's probably because I'm leaving the face a little open with it. See, I got that one a little, little bit low on the face, but even still, 250. There you go. That's forgiveness right there. Spin actually went down too, which is interesting. Yeah. That you just hit just probably a little bit low on the toll on that. One pick. thing I wanted to bring up here before we kind of wrap this thing up uh, overall, but ball speed again. So we noticed with the seven iron between the 223 and 225, we didn't notice a lot of difference. Same thing here, Hot, basically 140 to 140.6. I don't, I mean, I feel like that's, there's something in the 223, like you said, there's just some juice in there that I don't think has been in, in that category of Mizuno iron in the past. The little bit of extra distance provided in that club head, I think. Yeah, of, of the three clubs, probably my favorite club would have been probably the, the 223. Yeah. And if I was doing a combo, I'd probably do 223 with the, um, the 221's in probably like a seven yeah. through. It would, yeah. Because there is, good. I mean, and you talked about the feel. It seems like that it's really keeping up essentially with that 225 model in speed anyway. And then you're just, and I also noticed with the 225 with the four iron, didn't quite have that draw, not that extra workability that you're used to. But overall, I think the, a lot of good testing here, a lot of good golf shots hit Thomas, but we have some conclusions that we can, we'll discuss here in the final thoughts, but uh, I mean, not a surprise, but Mizuno has once again knocked it out of the park with their Mizuno Pro irons here. Yeah, I'm, they feel so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, every one of them felt good. Right. It's, once again, the way that Mizuno forges their irons, um, they look very, very classy at a dress. You, you just can't go wrong with them. Even like I'm looking at like the 225 four iron. Yeah, it's a little bit, little bit more gamey, but it still just looks very, very 
mm -hmm. clean with the finishes, with the edges, and everything like that. All right, Thomas, testing complete. Mizuno Pro Irons, 221, 223, 225. Let's kind of sum this thing up for us, and then we'll kind of dive into also who each of these models is for. Right, so touching on the loft again, um, for example, seven irons. I'm holding the 221 in my hand, we've got 34 degrees loft, 221. Yeah. 223 has got 32 degrees loft on it, and then the 225 has 30 degrees loft on it. So you're going to see uh, with the 221, you're going to see a little bit more spin, a little bit less ball speed, and a little bit more workability. Right. 223 is going to give you that little extra juice what we talked about, and I noticed that feel-wise off the face, okay. it felt really good. I, it just felt like it just had a little extra pop behind it, so the spin rate is going to drop a little bit, and your ball speed is going to increase a little bit. 225, same thing, you're going to see just a little bit more help there in a more kind of hollow-bodied iron. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt really good, and even just looking at the dispersion screen, I love looking at bringing that up. You can just see the differences here. Mm -hmm. If you look at the seven irons, you've got the blue, we got the orange and the green, green circles. T221, just a little bit shorter and maybe a little bit more to the left. And we talked yeah. about that workability. Yeah. I like to play a little bit of a drawer with the two, 221s. Yep. The other two just wanted us to fly just a little bit straighter for me. Sure. And we noticed just the differences in that carry distance there. Yeah. And then we can talk about that with the numbers here too. If we look at, um, if we look at carry distances with the three seven irons, 178.7, that's my number right there with yep. regards to seven irons, so I'm very, very happy with that. Spin rate around about 54, 5500 RPM to spin. Um, we go to the 223 that has two degrees less loft on it. We'll notice that I picked up eight yards of carry mm -hmm. distance and we lost a couple hundred RPMs of spin. And then if we go look at the 225 here, we picked up another five yards and then we also lost another four to 500 RPM to spin. Mm -hmm. So the loft and the design of the club head was, was, doing, was making those differences there. Um, if we look at the height, the one thing that with the, the 223 is we talked about the way it's got that extra weight, that extra tungsten kind of down, down, mm -hmm. down the bottom, the way the beveled edge allows that yeah. for the yeah, four through seven micro iron. slot in there. Mm -hmm. It's got that micro slot in there. We take a look at the height here. It was actually the highest club out of the three of them was the 223. It was 114 feet in the air. 221 was 113 and the 225 mm -hmm. was 111. So we noticed that there too, that it just flew just a little bit higher mm -hmm. by having that little extra help. So sure. it was hot, it felt good, and it flew a little higher. So yeah. that's why I like the 223. Yeah, I know you're really impressed with that one and you initially talked about too, the combo set you would build. Um, and I know that's gonna be a really popular one I think here in 2022 is combo sets with any combination of these three clubs, could be all three of them. You could start with you know the 221s lower with pitching wedge nine iron, then move into 223, and then have maybe a four iron of 221, for example, or excuse me, 225. Yep. Um, but in terms of uh, kind of trying to filter players into these models, I think we can start with the 221 being your top of the line players. I mean, you said you wouldn't even play the longer irons in these clubs, um, or kind of like you also referred to the golf purist that loves the look of a blade. It doesn't get more pure than the way the 221 looks. Yeah, I mean, your, your top amateur golfers, if you're a scratch player, maybe scratch to five handicap. And yeah. I hate using handicap, but right. as a way to diagnose it, you could probably do a combo set. You mm -hmm. could probably play the seven or eight iron through with the 221. Yeah. If you want that scoreability, you want that workability, you want that exceptional feel, the purest, absolutely you could do mm -hmm. it. Uh, I would probably include in the 223s in the yeah. long irons. That's where I, what I would do if I was going to go with these arms. I know, because I know you especially were impressed with those. Um, and then how about like the player that would maybe play a whole set of 223s or maybe even go 223 to 225? Maybe just, I mean, I know you don't like handicap, but maybe the player that does just want a little bit more help, maybe that misses the center of the face just a little bit more often can get that help in the 223. Yeah, I mean, you're scratched to 10, yeah. 12 handicap, I would probably, probably guess for the 223s. Mm -hmm. um, anything above that, say 15 handicap plus, you're looking at 225. Yeah. Or you're kind of looking at maybe, you know, you've also got your JPX line. Right. You're talking about Mizuno and you've got like your hot metal line right. that you can look at there too. Yeah. But uh, if you like that exceptionally good feel and you're a little bit higher handicap golfer, but you just love the feel of Mizuno irons, the 225 yeah. would be. Yeah. Pretty good, and, and also, you can combo the two twenty three with those right. clubs, and it looks so much like. I mean, they they 
improve that look of the 225 to make it look almost like a blade. I mean, it's really close. In the past, it's been like a thick blade. They've trimmed that down even more. It looks really good, too. So there's options out there for the golfers. 221, 223, 225. Pretty good test today. Um, of course, all the technology we discussed at the beginning of the video as well. These are going to be great in 2022. Mm -hmm. And Mizuno has you know a very good reputation for its irons. We talked about the feel how many times in this video. But I think we're going to have a lot of fittings here in 2022 in second swing. We're some sort of combination of these Mizuno Pro irons is going to be the, the best build out. No doubt. They, uh, they look and they feel incredibly good. Um, yeah, they're, they're so good. And there's a reason why a lot of players choose to play these irons. Mm -hmm. It's just the pure feel and looking at that with these particular irons. Yeah, so golfers, make sure you know where to go, right, for your fittings for these Mizuno Pro irons, Second Swing Golf. Uh, you can schedule a fitting online at secondswing.com. You can call one of our five store locations and schedule your fitting with someone like Thomas um, in the store here and get you dialed in. Make sure your iron set, your new Mizuno iron set is fit for exactly your swing. So Thomas, thank you for joining today, uh, giving all this information, all the swings. Again, Mizuno Pro Irons, big home run here in 2022. Yep, they have killed it again. <laughs>